You don't need to do that, but we're design nerds and we like it, so. Right, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You could start with characters. We want our characters to be identifiable in our world. So how we build them, what color choices do we use? What is the style of the clothing and the, the attire that they have? It has to be ownable. Like you don't want it to be like compared against Call of Duty or any of the other games that are out there. We have to feel like we stand on our own. And so we're immediately trying to look at fashion. We're looking at color. We're looking at how we approach technology. So all those things are starting to inform that. And we're doing the same thing across environments. So when you think about environment building, when you jump into a game, there's 70% of it that we want to be familiar with. And there's 30% that is that sort of new look on future. So what is it? Is it rounded buildings that feel like a Jenga block? Um, what, you know, so without, those are things you need to consider. How are our weapons different than everybody else? And so each one has its own layer of how we define what shrapnel is. And I think there are some of that stuff is going to continue to work itself out. Um, I think when you're looking at things through the foundry tool, there's obvious shape languages when it comes to 45 degree angles or how do you want sort of things to be edgy or soft or gritty. Um, those are things that we can start to say like that feels shrapnel and we can start to build a language around that based on shapes that we use. Um, and it, it's a very, that's a very fine line and it's something that we can spend a long time trying to go through and get just right. Because if you look at other games out there, if you look at like Destiny, you look at some of the other games, um, there's a definite style, like really thin astral shapes. Um, where do we want to be? We want to be kind of in that hard edged gritty space. So what does that mean? It means we want to have shapes that are maybe not too sharp and pointy, but just slightly there. Do we want to have like textural noise within our designs? Those are all things we need to consider that help to influence what is shrapnel. Yeah, I think there's a piece of that that's just like the studio methodology around UGC as well. Like, you know, we've said for a long time that our UGC tools aren't like anybody can do anything because if you can be anything, then you're kind of nothing and it's not shrapnel anymore. So we always said that as much as we want you to do like everything that you want to do in the UGC, if you squint your eyes at a piece of art that somebody makes, you should be able to say like, oh yeah, that came from shrapnel. Mm -hmm. And the way that we're doing it with the tools that we have now are basically in providing the prefabs that people want to use. Like all of those really cool, like interesting templatized um, like assets that people have been using so far, those have come from us. And so there's always going to be a little bit of that DNA in it. And then we get to be, you know, surprised and delighted when we see people totally twist those out of shape into something we didn't expect. Mm -hmm. And that's that's the exciting thing that we want to try to do. Like, you know, when it comes to some of the other UGC stuff, we always go back to those moments, like, you know, a couple of decades ago when you'd have something like an Unreal Tournament tool and somehow someone manages to like cram that shape into a different box and they made a capture the flag mode out of a deathmatch mode. Yep. It was like, well, how the fuck did they do that? We feel like that vibe has kind of been missing from games for a while and we really do want to try to bring it back. So I think it's, you know, there is a rule set and we want you to try to break the rules within that rule set as quickly and coolly as people yeah. can. Yep. <laughs> well, I mean, a lot of that stuff in concept is just that, it's inspiration. I, I believe that vehicle was something that was actually referenced from a real vehicle. What we were trying to reference was more of a gangster hideout and trying to look at like the Ozaki uh, Yakuza family, how they might actually be in some sort of uh, big building that they are really proud of everything that they have from collections of vehicles to collections of armor. What is that for them when they're there hanging out in their space? And so we use a lot of those, those assets as a way to sort of like set you in a space. We know that we're grounding you in an environment that people have a show exhibit of vehicles. So that's what that was there for. It's more to like set the tone of what we're doing and then give you the sense that you're in some sort of gangster hideout. And that's what that concept was used to do. I mean, I think people are used to hearing about environmental storytelling or world building. And like there's a ton that you can do with that subconsciously where, you know, even like listening to Jay now, you'd say like, all right, well, what that says to me is that even though they're this, you know, futuristic, powerful organization, they've gotten appreciation for legacy in the past. And like, like I was saying before, and we could contrast that with other houses by saying some of them are just laser focused on the future, like come what may, the ends justify the means. Whereas, you know, in the piece that you're describing, there's much more of a reverence for what came before. Mm -hmm. So now you can put that up on the wall and say like, all right, how would that apply to ammo or materials or whatever else to represent those guys? So that 
when you do run into those characters outside of that setting, they're taking certain amounts of it with them. Yep. And so then it's just, you know, you don't need to do that, but we're design nerds and we like it. So. Right, <laughs> exactly. It just makes it cool, because if you didn't have a cool car in there or a statue of a, 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 you know, some sort of old armor, it's like it's then it's just walls with beautiful color and texture and material, but we add those things in to tell more story. There's cool subconscious education that you can do too, where if you have like that car, or you know maybe before it, it's like samurai armor, like you yeah. know hundreds of years old, and then it's a car, and it's like oh wow that's cool, like I'm, I'm seeing this lineage. Then there's some piece of futuristic technology that we have, like maybe it's a weapon or maybe it's you know, architecture that was 3D printed in a way that we we couldn't do now, next to those other things. Now you're starting to say like, oh, I get it, 70-30. Yeah. Like I recognize these things, but then there's this weird thing like towards the other end, what's that about? How do they interrelate with each other and how is that important in gameplay? Like usually you only get to do a certain amount of that in a game because it's, you know, it could go on forever. Um, there's a lot of ideation, which doesn't, you know, ship the thing. But you know, we prioritized it in the studio just because it's what we're good at and we dig it and it's fun. You know, like that's that's very much the fun part. Well, I'll add to that too, because like thinking about that 7030, I think that's a great example of how that vehicle or how that samurai armor, which we have concepts of, how those are things from the past that we can relate to. So when we come into a world, we immediately know where we're at, we can understand the vibe that we're trying to tell. But we were talking about through concept of that 30% is it's no longer an actual physical thing that we're looking at. It's a digital version of what we're looking at. So when we're going through concept now, it's that, hey, there is this beautiful tree that was once here and it's now a digital tree. It's animating, it's falling its leaves. And that's how we're gonna sort of take that 30% and take it into the future. It may be a hologram of a vehicle that they used to have that is now represented in form on a statuesque sort of place and it's animated in a way. So like those are ways we can take the old and bring it into the future.